Hey, hey, what is going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the My Journal Full Stack series of videos. This lesson should be episode number seven, I believe. Uh, last lesson, I showed you how to integrate user authentication as well as user login by creating the Sales MVC web application, which is loaded up in the left side using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I'm currently looking at Home.js, and I also have Routes.js loaded up right over there. Uh, what I'm able to do now is to launch this application using a node mod down below. And every time I sign in, let's say log in right here, I'm going to log in as my previously created user as bill at gmail.com and sign in. Uh, currently, this is loading up the home page of post objects, which is going to look a little bit like this. We have create post and we have three posts for the Bill Clinton user. Uh, if I sign out right now, I'm going to see uh, something else that looks a little bit different for the Donald user. So Donald at gmail.com. Uh, punch in my secret password and you'll see that Donald only has one post that looks like I am the president for the title. And I like to tweet silly things every once in a while. All right, so those are the two users that exist in the current system of the application. You can create more if you wanted to do so. But in today's video, what I really want to get to is the iOS application, which we created, I think, two episodes ago. Uh, we currently have the UI that looks just like this right now. And we want to be able to fetch the posts that belong to the currently logged in user. But all that stuff we haven't actually taken care of in the iOS app. So why don't I show you how to log in as a user very similar to this page here. So sign up, here is my login page. Uh, let me show you how to implement login inside of our iOS app. Uh, I'm going to run this code right now and I've done a little bit of refactoring. Um, you see down here we have this error that tells us we have failed to fetch post objects because right now we can't really hit the post URL. So if I shrink this up a little bit, um, you can see previously we were trying to hit post, but it's at 404 because we haven't set up that endpoint. I'll show you how to fix that in just a moment. Uh, right here, if I click on the top left login, you can see that we are hitting this login uh, file private function. All it's doing right now is it's printing the perform login and try to attempt a refetch on the post objects. Okay, and the other refactoring that I did was I took the service code. So there used to be service code up here. And I took that code and put it inside of this file uh, right over here so that we can separate all the logic cleanly into one single file. Uh, the other thing I did inside of here was I refactored a parameter called base URL as a local variable. And inside of each of these uh, fetch guys, we are using the base URL here, uh, down here, and also down here. So make sure to make this change as well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to actually implement the login from the iOS app. So it's going to look very similar to what we have over here. Uh, all it's requiring us to do is to pass in the email address and the password to get the login correct. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back to my view controller file inside of here somewhere. We are going to handle the login. So what exactly do we want to do here is we want to fire off a login request. So fire off a login request to server of local host. And this is very easy. Um, I'm just going to first establish a URL for the local host. So URL uh, string, and then we need to say something like HTTP slash slash local host at, I think the port is 1440 right now. Uh, I'm going to be firing off these requests from the view controller. You might want to put it in the service a little bit later on, but it's going to be easier for me to do it in this file right here. So this is the URL string. Make sure you say guard and let because this guy might fail. And once we have this guy, we want to fire off this request using a URL session. So shared and data task. And I'm going to be using this one with a URL request. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is because a couple of different things here. Uh, let me go back to the Visual Studio code. Uh, you'll see that every time I log into the application right here, it's going to say that I'm using this URL route that says a put request uh, API v1 entrance login. So let me show you that one more time down here. So bill at gmail.com123. 
sign in and you see that we fired off this put request. So we have to emulate this request right here. So let me just go over here and then I'm going to go back to Xcode and the actual URL is going to look like this right here. So slash API v1 entrance and login. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to construct something called a login request, which is a type URL request. This guy takes in the above URL object. Now this login request is going to have an HTTP method of the put request that we need. And something else that we have to implement is the actual parameters that we want to pass in, right? So if we sign up, you can see that we need an email address and then a password as well. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. Uh, I am going to use a do catch. So do catch down here. I'm going to say login and request that the HTTP body is a data object. And I'll just do this in lines of JSON serialization uh, data with object. This guy is my parameters. So why don't I make this a little bit cleaner? Uh, let params equals this. So we need the email address, which is going to look like that. Uh, this will be bill at gmail.com. So all of this is a string bill at gmail.com. And then also the password is also a string key. Um, his password is just one, two, three, one, two, three. And this should be okay. I'm going to pass params as my object here now. So I'll remove that. Uh, for the writing options, you can just use init like so. And this looks pretty good. Uh, if something happens right here, we're going to say print and fail. So fail to, uh, let's just say serialize data. And then maybe we want to print out the error as well. So colon and the serialization error like so. Okay, a lot to be said about that bit of code, but this is fairly straightforward by now. Hopefully uh, you can Google this entire solution. It should come up pretty quickly. Uh, the last thing we need to do is to use the login request for the URL session, the completion handler, uh, hit enter data response and error like so. Uh, make sure to call resume, so never forget this resume. Uh, even though I type this out all the time, I always um, forget to type out the resume. So instead of here, I'm just going to check the error to make sure that nothing bad is happening when I log in. So if let error equals error print out, uh, fail to log in and colon error and return. Otherwise, uh, we have probably logged in. So probably <laughs> logged in successfully. Okay, so hopefully that's true. And now I'm going to run this code to make sure uh, something is happening. So I'm going to shrink this down, uh, scroll all the way down for my Visual Studio Code terminal. And let's hit the login right now. And you can see that we hit the API using the iOS uh, application. We hit V1 entrance login with a 200, so everything looks good. Inside the console right here, we perform a login fetch uh, post, which is that. And then we have probably logged in successfully. Okay, so probably is uh, the keyword here. So how do we know if we actually logged in successfully as Bill? Well, remember with bill at gmail.com, we only have, uh, let's see, password, 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 and sign in. We have three of these posts right here, right? So let's attempt a self.fetch post like so after we log in successfully. So let me quickly remind you what this call does because it's pretty important. Uh, view controller fetch post. We'll go back up to this function here. We are fetching a post and then we are uh, doing something using this service class. So another thing that's important is to go back to the service here and the actual function call is uh, somewhere up here, fetch post. And so this guy is actually hitting the uh, URL 14, let's see, 1440 slash post. So what's going to happen is if I run this application again and hit the login, it's going to attempt to hit slash post. You'll see that down here. So login and then somewhere after that is going to just try to hit slash post. Uh, it's going to return to us with a 404, which means page not found. And the reason for that is because uh, we haven't set up the post route inside of this route.js file. Now you can set up your own uh, post route if you wanted to do that and then rewrite your action code. Uh, that's perfectly fine. But an easier trick to getting this to work is to go into your home.js file. So remember this guy, 
Now, home.js is the route that actually gets uh, hit when we hit slash home like this. And it is making a query using water lines to find all of the posts with the criteria of a user and user ID, which is kept track of through the session, okay? And then at the very end, we launch this page using the res.view code, and then we pass in all the posts. That's kind of why we see these three post objects. Uh, so one trick that you can apply for um, Node.js is you can do something like this. So if the request wants JSON, then we can just return and res.send and send the all post object, which should be an array. So you can do this and your code should be fine. Uh, this entire page will skip this logic right here because this doesn't exactly want JSON. It's expecting a text plain content type. So it's going to skip this and head back to uh, this original logic here. Okay, so what I can do with this is inside of Xcode, right? Inside of Xcode, whenever I'm fetching a post, uh, instead of just using a plain URL get request right here, and we're just using URL, session, and URL. What you can do is you can tell the request to actually want JSON. Uh, this little bit of code is going to look like this. So var uh, fetch post uh, post request equals URL request uh, URL, URL from above uh, fetch post request down here. And so you want to call this one function called set value application slash JSON, and this guy will be uh, content type with a dash. And so this is all you need. I'm going to call uh, fetch post request and replace this URL here with the actual request. And this guy, we want to point to home now. Okay, I'm going to run this. And now when I log in, it's going to hit the slash home instead. So slash home. And then you see we hit home down below right here. And then in the UI, we actually refresh with all of the post objects belonging to bill at gmail.com, okay? So the reason why all that works is because we are wanting JSON now with this one line of code. And then for the actual home request, we are hitting a line eight right here, returning all the post objects as an array of JSON objects. And remember, this guy is just decoding an array of post objects and then sending it back to the home controller, which is view right there. Okay, now the moment of truth uh, we're going to actually have to see is if we restart this application here, right? So let me see. I think instead of view did load, I'm going to bring back this call of fetch post. I'm going to restart this. And you're going to actually see the post objects inside of this list without me having to log into the application again. So you see this right here, it's uh, still being persisted or it's not being persisted, but basically every time I restart the app, it starts off as blank. And then I hit the slash home route from my application down here. And then what's happening is that it actually remembers the session ID of the user because when you're logging in inside of uh, Swift, inside of these URL session calls, so where is my handle? I handle login right here. When you are firing off requests using URL session, it keeps track of the session information inside of the cookies of your Swift iOS application. So this means that you don't have to log in again and the Swift iOS app is going to manage that for you. Uh, sometimes when you make requests to the REST API, you're required to pass in a uh, basic authentication URL, some kind of key. Uh, but using the session, you don't have to do that. There is a big difference between the two. So make sure you're aware of this approach versus the basic auth approach. Okay, last, last thing I'd like to do before I let you go today is what happens if I uh, change this right here. So previously, uh, I logged in as bill at gmail.com, which has three posts, right? So last thing I'll do is I'm going to sign up and I'm going to try to log in as Donald at gmail.com and punch in a password. So remember, Donald has this uh, little post that says, I'm the president. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this right here for the handle login button, which is in the uh, top left corner here. I'm going to change this right here to use Donald. So Donald and, you know, luckily they have the same password, so this should work. I'm going to run this right now. 
Uh, first thing you'll see is because the session is being managed by the iOS app, uh, it's going to load all of the posts for the bill user. I'm going to hit login and now login is going to fire off the request using the Donald at gmail.com. As you can see clearly through the breakpoint, it's setting over these params instead. Now I'm going to hit the continue. And because I'm now logged in as Donald at gmail.com and once it's all done, I fetch another request down here. Uh, it's going to fetch all the posts related to the logged in user, which is currently now Donald. And that's why I see only one post instead of three. Okay, so you can try to switch this to make sure that uh, the expectation of the post objects are what you are expecting. But basically you have to play around with this right here to make sure that the account is correct. Okay, uh, one thing that I might have skipped over is uh, how exactly do you know what these param keys are, right? So we have email and capital A address and password. And all of this uh, is going to exist inside of the actual login route. So the way you figure this out is you go inside of here, go look at the route, so routes.js, try to find that. We are over here, look at the action, which is entrance uh, slash login. This guy is going to exist inside of controllers, entrance, so entrance and login JS. Uh, the inputs right here, they tell you that uh, it's going to expect you to pass in the email address and then the password. And then this guy, remember me, is a little checkbox in HTML. It's not required, so you don't see the require key here. So that means you don't have to pass in that parameter. Uh, and everything else should just work out correctly if you have your inputs established correctly as well. Okay, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today's lesson. Uh, a couple of last minor details that I want to mention here is that when you are inside of your iOS application, you're most likely going to want to implement some kind of a logout button on the top left corner or some kind of profile page to allow the user to log out, right? And the way you want to do that is to make sure you hit the correct route. So go back to your routes file. There is a logout route right here. So API v1 account and logout. Make sure to hit this so that you can delete all the session information from the server and also from the iOS app right here. You have to make sure you do that. Otherwise your user is going to be logged in forever. And obviously you don't want to have that happen if they actually want to intentionally log out. Okay, another thing that you might want to you know think about is when you log in, you obviously might want to provide some kind of UI that looks like this so that they can toggle the email address in the UI instead of hard coding it inside the application here. And there's, you know, a billion different ways of doing that. Maybe some kind of delegation method so that you can refresh the screen after you log in over here. Uh, all that's really up to you. That's not really the interesting parts of this series. And if you have any questions about that, make sure to leave that down below. Uh, that's gonna be it for this series, I think. Uh, maybe I might do another video if you guys have a lot of questions on this stuff. I know it's been a lot of code, but you do have to look at this stuff on your own for you know a little bit of time before you can truly synthesize exactly what's going on. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed everything up to this point. I will uh, maybe see you in the next video. Bye, guys.